Hello, good afternoon everybody and thank you for uh, attending today's ceremony or uh, joining us at home in your living room. We are here today to celebrate uh, and recognize many of Pittsburgh's dedicated and uh, talented individuals and organizations and groups that continue to do so much good in our city to uh, uh, to make this America's most livable city and, uh, and a great place to live. And I often say that uh, this city is really made up of dynamic people and I think you'll see today um, that that is the case. We do this every couple of weeks uh, in an effort to honor and uh, really recognize all the wonderful work that's happening um, in our community. Today's uh, event is, is a special one in many ways. Uh, as you all know, uh, February is Black History Month and the first portion of today's program uh, has been designed by my Diverse City 365 Task Force uh, in honor of Black History Month. Uh, before we begin the proclamation ceremony, I would like to acknowledge a few people uh, that are in the room who are members of the task force. Uh, the city's 2012 living legend honoree, uh, our city treasurer, Margaret Lanier, is here. Here, Margaret, thank you uh, for being here. She's a member of the, uh, the task force and, as I mentioned, our city treasurer. Uh, the task force committee chair, the assistant personnel director, Tamiko Stanley, is here. Thank you, Tamiko, for uh, the work that she does uh, in, in bringing us here today and, and really her work, as, as, the, uh, uh, as the title suggests, Diversity 365, a commitment that we have uh, not just during the month of February, but 365 days a year. Uh, this portion of the ceremony is titled, Our Journey is Not a Destination, which recognizes the significance and impact of African American contributions uh, throughout history. We've selected local music entrepreneurs that have made significant impact on the Pittsburgh community uh, through their contribution to music and the arts. Uh, and as I mentioned, the next five individuals that we will honor uh, are recognized for their passionate and dedicated music moguls that are from right here uh, in our backyard, America's most livable city, the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, and I think the other important thing to note is that their talents have inspired others uh, while also positively impacting and influencing the arts um, in our region. So without further ado, we're going to get started. Uh, the first uh, proclamation will go to Shanice uh, Wilson, who is not here. She's in uh, Los Angeles. Tamiko is going to uh, except on our, her behalf, for those of you who don't know who Shanice is, uh, Grammy-nominated Billboard chart topper for her uh, groundbreaking fame and success in music and on Broadway, uh, and her record-breaking singles, I Love Your Smile and When I Close My Eyes. She continues to be a, an inspiration to those uh, that aspire to be musicians and uh, artists. So uh, I'll read the proclamation and present it to Tamiko. Uh, whereas Shanice Lorraine Wilson, born on May 14, 1973, in Pittsburgh, is best known as Shanice, the Grammy-nominated American Rhythm and Blues soul singer and songwriter, is currently residing in Los Angeles, has scored two top six Billboard hit singles in the 1990s. And whereas Shanice was also a child star performing in television commercials with, J <coughs> with jazz great Ella Fitzgerald, and on the hit teen program Kids Incorporated. Shanice was signed to a major record deal with a and Records in 1986 and later with Motown Records released the sensational and moving hit single I Love Your Smile. The single hit the top 10 best in 22 countries and achieved number two spot on the Billboard Hot 100 list. Whereas Shanice and actor comedian Flex Alexander Knox married on Valentine's Day in 2000. They have a daughter, Imani, born in 2001, a son, Elijah, born in 2004. And whereas Shanice has had success in music on Broadway and has been featured in Rolling Stones magazine, People magazine, highlighted on Black Entertainment Tonight, and featured in Ebony magazine, she has been an inspiration in the arts and the music worlds and in the greater Pittsburgh region. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Luke Ravenstahl, Mayor of the City of Pittsburgh, recognize and congratulate Shanice as we celebrate the amazing artistic contributions of African Americans throughout history and the trailblazing music moguls from our city. I do hereby declare February 21st, 2013, Shanice P. 
Pittsburgh Music Mogul Day here in our most livable city of Pittsburgh. Congratulations to Shanice and we <laughs> When I say early this morning, I mean the sun was not up. And she was so excited. Um, she actually was reminiscing about her first performance when she was three years old in Market Square. And she was super excited, and she wanted me to say thank you to everyone. Thank you to Mayor Ravenstall for wanting to recognize her. And she also told me to make sure that I end with those Steelers. Right. <laughs> thank you. Good deal. Thank you. Our uh, next uh, honoree this morning is uh, Lee Davis. I know Lee is here if you want to step forward. Uh, these guys are well behaved, by the way. They're prepared, uh, in line, and ready to go. Uh, Lee is the CEO of uh, Sony Red National Recording Label, uh, founder of the Hip Hop Academy, and co-founder of Promotional Push Incorporated uh, for his notable work cultivating local talent and efforts to shine a national spotlight uh, on Pittsburgh town. So congratulations, Lee. We're uh, happy you're here. I'll present this to you and then uh, ask you to say a few words. Whereas Lee Davis, and we're giving away everybody's age here, born on February 27, 1970 in Pittsburgh, uh, is the innovative producer and creative genius behind the Three Horsemen, EMI, and Sony collaboration for the 3HM Sony Red National Recording Label based here in downtown Pittsburgh. And whereas, with more than 18 years of music industry experience, Lee got his start in music in 1994 and launched his first record label, CPA Records, in 1996, producing rap artist Fierce. Lee is currently the CEO of 3HM Sony Red Recording Label, founder of the Hip Hop Academy and Hip Hop Academy Radio, and co-owner of Promotional Push Incorporated, which is nationally recognized for promotional projects with mega moguls such as Russell Simmons, Sean P. Diddy Combs, Ray J, and the MTV and VH1 music television networks. Whereas in 2012, Lee partnered with solo artist Ray J to executive produce the Pittsburgh Hip Hop All Stars co compilation album for the Universal Music Group. The album was a national release and featured 19 local artists placing a national spotlight on Pittsburgh talent. And whereas Lee is also a community organizer, a mentor, and an advocate for a nonviolent society. As the former outreach coordinator for the Compu Community Empowerment Association, a board member for the International Council for Urban Peace and Justices, and a member of the Men Against Destruction Defending Against Drugs and Social Disorders, board director for Kid Nation Foundation, committee member for the Lewis Danvers Leukemia Fund, advisor to the August Wilson Center, and volunteer for the Kaboom Foundation, which builds playgrounds in low-income neighborhoods. And whereas Lee Davis has accomplished much success and has been recognized with various awards, including New Pittsburgh Courier Fab 40 Under 40, CEA Nation Builder Award, and the New Pittsburgh Courier 50 Men of Excellence. But it, it is his work in developing and cultivating the local talent from our region that is most notable. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Luke Ravenstall, Mayor of the City of Pittsburgh, congratulate and thank Lee Davis for inspiring local artists and for his countless and amazing artistic contributions as we celebrate Black History Month and the contributions of all African Americans throughout history. I do hereby declare February 21st, 2013, Lee Davis, Pittsburgh Music Mogul Day, here in our most livable city, Pittsburgh. Let's give it up for this. I told you it was going to get hot. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to thank, you know, uh, Mayor Ravenstall, Ms. Stanley, and the board for choosing me for this uh, prestigious award. Um, I, I'm in awe, you know, to stand next to so many great people and be on the shoulders of so many legends that have come before me. But um, one person I would like to thank, besides my family and friends for coming, is my grandmother who, you know, is looking down on us from heaven. You know, it wasn't so long ago that she came in from Alabama and couldn't even eat at the, the lunch counter downtown Pittsburgh because of the color of her skin. 
So I know that she's looking down on me right now and, and smiling and, and saying to Brother Luke for trying to do this diversity program. She's saying, job well done. You know what I mean? So I'm happy to see so many people come out. Um, hopefully this will be the start of uh, you know unifying the city as far as the music culture. And I know we've been trying to do that for years and, and, and hopefully get us together and start giving back to the community and working towards you know inspiring more youth and also getting to put these guns down because we're losing too many babies out here. So with that, with that being said, once again, thank you, and I appreciate you. Next up is uh, legendary American jazz musician and leader of the Carnegie Music Hall Ensemble, uh, Mr. Roger Humphreys. Uh, he's here. As we all know, for his phenomenal uh, musicianship in the jazz genre and his contributions to progressing the profession uh, of percussion music. We really thank Roger for all that he's done uh, and really honored that he's here today with us. Uh, and it's my honor to present this proclamation to him. Whereas Roger Humphreys, who was born on January 30th, 1944, is a celebrated American pioneer jazz musician of a family of ten. He began playing music when he was four and a half years old and became an accomplished jazz professional by the tender age of 14. By 16, Roger led the Carnegie Music Hall Ensemble. And whereas Roger got his start in Pittsburgh's Hill District, where he began touring and playing with the likes of Stanley Turrentine, Shirley Scott, the Horace Silver Jazz Group, and recording on the album Song for My Father during the 1960s. Roger played for Ray Charles on a national tour. He was selected after for music with Billy Preston, Freddie Hubbard, Dizzy Gillespie, George Benson, Dwayne Dolphin, Nancy Wilson, and the Isley Brothers. And whereas Roger has taught at the High School for Creative and Performing Arts, the University of Pittsburgh, Slippery Rock University, influencing countless musicians and highly accomplished drummers. And whereas Roger has experienced tremendous success as a pioneer jazz musician, he has been recognized and honored for his tenured career and for his contributions to music education. His Pittsburgh roots and his inspirational career have increased the popularity of jazz and drummers throughout the greater Pittsburgh region. Most notable among his accomplishments are the artists and jazz musicians and the trailblazing music moguls from our city who have been inspired by his works, teachings, and pioneering efforts. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Luke Ravenstall, Mayor of the City of Pittsburgh, recognize and congratulate Roger Humphreys for inspiring so many and for his countless accomplishments and contributions to the jazz world. I do hereby declare February 21st, 2013, Roger Humphreys, Pittsburgh Musical Music Mogul Day here in our most livable city of Pittsburgh. Roger. I'd like to say thank you to uh, Luke Williams and our mayor. He's been doing a heck of a good job. And uh, also, I'd like to say thank you to my family. I have them here. Uh, the support that they gave me ever since I was three and a half years old has been wonderful. And I would like to pass a message on to if you all have children, do not discourage them if they have a passion for music. Everybody do not have this. And I've been fortunate enough to be with a friend of mine that's going to be introduced in a few minutes to be able to teach at Kappa High School for the last 28 years. And I just retired. But it's so wonderful to be able to encourage the young musicians who would like to play music, because if you look at the history of our town, we have some of the greatest musicians ever on earth come from Pittsburgh. And I just want to keep passing it on. I want to say thank you, Pittsburgh, for making me have a wonderful life. I love Pittsburgh. All right. Next up, we have uh, Ime Alakiva. Alakiva. <laughs> Getting better. Every time I say it, I get a little better. Uh, we thank uh, Ime for being here. He's an Emmy Award winning composer uh, and also the CEO of Hip Hop on Lock for his investment in local youth in the arts as a media ambassador to international markets throughout the industries of music, film, and entertainment. Uh, we congratulate him. It's my honor to present him this proclamation. Whereas Ime Alakiva on, 
Quiva. I'll get it. There's, it's, it. It's in here a lot. Ime Alec Quiva, an Emmy Award winning producer, entrepreneur, and mentor, known for his strong presence in the music, film, and radio industries, is the owner and CEO of Your Mom's House LLC, a full service recording and production facility on the east side of Pittsburgh. He's the executive director of the Hip Hop on Lock project, producer for Lockdown Radio Pittsburgh. Music, compo music composer and arranger, filmmaker, and radio producer, voiceover artist, mentor, advisor, and consultant serving the greater Pittsburgh region. Whereas Ime, a Pittsburgh native, studied at the University of Pittsburgh and grew up on the east side of Pittsburgh. He got his start at his mom's house, experimenting with music, sound, and audio control. Holding various positions in the industry, Ime served as the Director of Production for Pittsburgh's own WAMO 106.7 FM radio station for many years. And whereas Ime works with schools throughout the Western Pennsylvania region, including Propel Schools, the Pittsburgh Public Schools, and the University of Pittsburgh Designing and Developing Music and Arts Education programs. He has provided Pittsburgh youth with insight, skill, and inspiration, including math, in the music and sonic science, which prepare students with cognitive skills and opportunities to interact with professional artists, entertainers, business powerhouses, and elected officials. Whereas Ime's work has earned him the coveted Mid-Atlantic Mid -Atlantic Emmy Award for Music Composition and Arrangement for the production of the soundtrack for WQED Multimedia's civil rights documentary, Tuskegee Airmen Torchbearers. This program covers the experience of the Tuskegee Airmen, documenting the compelling truth about equality struggles in history. More than 40 men from Western Pennsylvania served as Tuskegee Airmen in the gripping documentary. And whereas he is considered a media ambassador for his hometown city of Pittsburgh and international markets, he is recognized locally and across the country with honors that include Pittsburgh Couriers Fab 40, YWCA's Community Youth Leader, Pittsburgh Magazine's 40 Under 40, Pittsburgh Hip Hop Award, and the Time Telly Award. However, his inspiration and positive youth influence remain his most notable accomplishment. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Luke Ravenstall, Mayor of the City of Pittsburgh, recognize and congratulate M.A. <laughs> See, I was worried about the last one. <laughs> Ime Alequiva for his creative innovative innovation and leadership. Hey, I, they, they mess my name up all the time. <laughs> and leadership during Black History Month. I do hereby declare February 21st, 2013, Ime Alequiva Day here in our most livable city of Pittsburgh. Ime, Words uh, cannot articulate what I'm feeling right now because I am because we are. Everyone in this room is responsible for who I am. Uh, growing up in the city of Pittsburgh at the age of 13, not necessarily having guidance, I fell in love with music. And that music was hip hop. So growing up, I've always had that a part of my life. And I always felt that I had a tremendous responsibility to give back to our community, to give back to our city in order to change the world. Yeah. So I used my gift of hip hop to create Hip Hop Online, servicing 16 students our first year to now over 4,000 in 11 school districts and over three dozen partnering organizations. This is the power of hip hop, this is the power of music, and if something happened to me today, I would leave my legacy and my footprint here uh, because it's all about making something that makes a difference. And when I'm in these schools teaching these young people um, how to make something that makes a difference, that's what my life is totally dedicated to. So I encourage all of you to use what it is that you love and change the world doing it. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Mayor Luke Ravenstall and his incredible team, and most importantly, the incredible community that we have here in the city of Pittsburgh for making me who I am today. Thank you and congratulations to the other recipients. The, the founder of uh, uh, one of the great Pittsburgh uh, 
institutions and, and really uh, kind of culminating uh, the, the theme here this morning, uh, Pittsburgh School for uh, Creative uh, and Performing Arts Kappa uh, for his pioneering spirit of more than uh, 30 years of service in the arts community in Pittsburgh uh, and abroad. And it's a real pleasure for me to, uh, to present uh, this proclamation to Dr. Clark this morning. Uh, whereas Dr. Harry D. Clark is a retired administrator from the Pittsburgh Public Schools with 30 years of service. He was instrumental in founding the Pittsburgh High School for the Creative and Performing Arts, the first public arts high school in Western Pennsylvania, where he served as the principal. He earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Music Education in 1962 and his Master's of Science degree in Music Education in 1965 from Duquesne University, where he was inducted into the Century Club of Outstanding Alumni in 1993. Dr. Clark served as president of the International Network of Performing and Visual Arts Schools, a professional arts advocacy organization with membership schools across the United States and Canada, as well as schools in the United Kingdom, South Africa, Australia, and Chile. And whereas Dr. Clark helped initiate new school arts programs in Virginia, Kansas, Michigan, Alabama, and Colorado. He served as Executive Director of Neighborhood Housing Services, a nonprofit organization that provides an educational program for first-time home buyers of low to moderate income. He successfully acquired funding to initiate an educational program that partnered Neighborhood, South, Neighborhood Housing Services with the Andy Warhol Museum. The partnership supports a program that he initiated entitled Youth Technology Program, serving inner city students with computer training and other social skills. Whereas Dr. Clark served as director of the Black Achievers Program at the Swickley Valley YMCA, an adjunct professor at LaRoche College, and as a field project advisor for the Pennsylvania Council for the Arts. He presently serves as a member of the Board of Directors of Bridgeway Capital, a community loan fund for southwestern Pennsylvania, an advisor to the African American Jazz Preservation Society of Pittsburgh, a board member of Kente Arts Alliance, and co-president of the newly formed Lighthouse Inc., a beacon for America's original art form. In May of 2000, Dr. Clark received the Distinguished Service Award from Magnet Schools of America in recognition of his service as a Magnet School consultant and for initiating and developing new school programs in several cities across the country. Now therefore be resolved that I, Luke Ravenstahl, as Mayor of the City of Pittsburgh, congratulate Dr. Harry Clark on his remarkable list of lifetime achievements and thank him for sharing his talents with his hometown of Pittsburgh. I do hereby declare February 21st, 2013, Dr. Harry Clark, Pittsburgh Music Mogul Day here in our most livable city of Pittsburgh. Dr. Clark. share this uh, moment with the other recipients and to thank uh, Mayor Ravensall and the team uh, for uh, selecting me to be a part of this. I, I noticed one thing. Uh, you gave the ages of everyone. <laughs> I was the last one. And I guess they said, well... Dana took it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dana took it out. Well, guess what? I'm going to be 73 years old in a couple of months. And I'm proud of that. So uh, as long as uh, 
the man upstairs gives me the strength to continue to do the kinds of things that I like to do. Uh, and that's to work with young people, to be creative as, in, in any way that I can, and to continue to learn. I have seen a number of students who have come through the classroom that I've had an opportunity to touch. They are grown, they are out there, and they are doing their thing. And it's very, very interesting because now I was the teacher, but now I'm the student. And you never stop learning. And the thing that I've uh, always been very, very pleased with is the fact that I've always had the strength, the support uh, of my family, and I thank them for that. And I thank them for putting up with me. And I'd just like to say that uh, as I listen to uh, the mayor read about these young and older <laughs> recipients, I realize too that uh, you know if we are able to do the kinds of things that we are doing now and continue to develop that and pass that on to young people, hopefully uh, the, the kinds of things that we're trying to accomplish will uh, be generated here in the city because we've done so many things in this city. Pittsburgh has just reached out all over the world. And so I'm pleased, very, very pleased and very honored to be a part of this. Thank you. So how do you feel today about being honored? I feel um, very blessed and um, I think it's outstanding, you know what I mean? Coming from you know, the background I come from, it's, you know, it's surprising, but when you put the work in, you know, I'll take it, you know what I mean? So I'm very happy about it. Is there anything that you'd like to say to the youth of, of Pittsburgh and the nation today? I always like to say, no matter what circumstances you come from, never give up, you know what I mean? Keep pushing, keep grinding, and, and, and do the right things. Get the right people around you to help you get to where you want to get in life. You know what I mean? Never give up. So what's next for you? For me, um, locally, we're just going to keep working in the community and doing what we do for and with the kids. And also nationally, i got a, a couple movies that I'm working on, as well as some reality shows that's about to come on um, on major networks. So we're trying to blend you know, the, the entertainment with the community, you know, raise some awareness and some conscious, you know, consciousness amongst the kids, man, and, and help motivate them and inspire them to do something, you know, greater than what the community may say they can and can't do, you know what I mean? So that's where we're at with it. So if there's somebody that uh, wants to work with you or have a child that wants to, uh, wants you to mentor them, uh, how can people get a hold of you? Um, they can hit me at ulee27 at gmail.com. That's U-L-E-E -E 27 at gmail.com. Or they can hit me at 412-589-5926. I'm never afraid to give any of my information out. I'm not that big. I ain't no superstar. And if, if I ever get to that level, you still can get me on my phone because it's going to stay the same number. <laughs> so anybody need me, just holler at me. How do you feel about being honored today? Um, honestly, it's testimony on how um, Webb's work when it so connects. Um, teamwork makes the dream work. Um, I'm just a product of that. I am because people um, out in the community have made me who I am today. And I'll never, ever uh, go without noticing that um, on an ongoing basis. Uh, to be honored by the mayor and the city of Pittsburgh, it, it's really testimony to the individuals that you know may be in the high skyscrapers that see what's going on um, on the uh, the ground um, in, in the streets. Uh, the uh, the ability just you know being able to take an organization from 16 students the first year to over 4,000 uh, students um, in a matter of five years is is just. Um, also a platform of letting individuals know the power of hip-hop. Hip-hop saved my life, so I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life in saving other youth um, through hip-hop as well. If there is anything that you'd like to say to uh, youth today, what would it be? Um, my encouragement uh, to youth is to believe within yourself first and spend a lifetime of, of trying to make a difference in themselves and the community that surrounds them. Um, you know, not to get too religious, but you know, we're here to multiply the numbers. And <clears throat> that's not just necessary in a physical form, but that's also an inspirational form and also the, in, in the form of giving back uh, through education, through, um, through all types of vegetables. Um, so 
that's what I would say to our youth uh, in a quick glance. So what is next for you? <coughs> well, I'm working on a lot of projects, um, a lot of film projects uh, with The Roots, uh, Macy's, uh, a lot of actors and actresses. Uh, uh, looking to work on a project with uh, Dr. Maya Angelou uh, with her poems and things of that nature and um, also you know going after you know more schools in, in our communities in order to bring hip-hop and lock our arts education program uh, to the forefront to be able to make it happen for a lot of individuals. And so if anybody wanted to get a hold of you how would they do that? They could get a hold of me directly email.aliquiva at gmail.com or info at hiphoponlock.org or uh, info at yourmomshouse.com. I'm also on Twitter, email underscore aliquiva, Instagram, email underscore aliquiva. Let's get together, seriously, and make a difference. All right? Let's do it. So, how do you feel about being honored today? It's wonderful, man. It's, it's just nice when people honor you, <laughs> you know, acknowledge you. So tell me some of the things that you've done to get here today. I say that again for me. Can you tell me some of the things that you've gone through to get here today? Well, just a little bit of traffic, finding a parking uh, space in, uh, in Macy's Park a lot, and going over mentally in my mind the things that I wanted to say, but uh, when it comes straight from the heart, it's not hard at all. I just tell it like it is. I'm glad to be a part of Pittsburgh. I'm glad to have been a part of mentoring so many kids in my life. And uh, I'm glad that I'm fortunate enough to have a wonderful family like I have. You know, mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, aunt, uncle, and a wonderful wife, and beautiful kids, grandkids, great grandkids. My life has been so great. And I hope to continue it by passing it on to music so I can share, you know, my life experience with other young people so they can have a wonderful life. Can you tell me one highlight of your career that sticks in your mind the most? One of the most, I guess, I've had so many of them. But one of them was in France on a river year working with Horse Silver. First chance I had to meet Ella Fitzgerald, you know. And uh, being like uh, on a plane with Al Davis and other guys in the band, you know, when I first joined. Once we got to like France, everybody kind of separated some miles and went to Italy. We stayed in France on a French Riviera and maybe another band went somewhere else. But that, that was a great memory because I was, um, I was young and everything was so fresh. And the experience of being on a Riviera was remarkable. It was remarkable. One of my greatest experiences I had. If there was something that you would tell youth of today, what would you tell them? I tell the youth of today, if it's something that you really want to do, you have the passion for it. Just remember, it's going to take hard work. And just don't give up. Just don't give up. Whatever you think your passion is, keep on pushing for it. Don't let nobody discourage you. But it's your life and it's your passion. So what's next for you? What's next for me is to continue in the music business and try to help other young musicians come out. If they don't have a direction how to complete what they're trying to do, so I can help send them in the right neighborhood. Because right now, at the point of my life, I've made so many contacts, I can maybe try to help them go somewhere, you know, wherever they need, wherever they need to get help from. From musicians, maybe some people who do the publishing company, and you know, whatever it is. I, I just want to be a part of uh, helping someone else in life with a youth kids here in Pittsburgh. So if somebody wanted to come and see you perform or uh, you know, get you to mentor their child in music, where, where would people find you? Well, we're so blessed now because we have the internet, we have the computer. <laughs> and if they would like to find me, all that they have to do is go on my website, rogerhumphreys.com, and open up the world where I'm at and also help them to get in touch with me by sending me an email so I can try to help them out. So how do you feel about being honored today? Oh, this is... I don't even know how to say it. I am so overwhelmed because, you know, when somebody says, 
thank you or I like what you did. That's all, you know, it's all you need. With all the work and someone appreciates it and uh, is able to take a look and say, you know, this is a good thing. It encourages me to come back to I get it right. <laughs> if there's one thing about your career that is highlighted in your mind the most, what would it be? I think that probably for me it was the challenge on how can I creatively make a difference for the young people that I was given charge of. Uh, and that that's from every side, it's like a piece of sculpture. We just didn't work on the artistic side, we worked on the social side. We worked on as many sides as we possibly could to make sure that we had a, a student that came out uh, well-rounded, if you will. So that was probably my, my biggest uh, and the most exciting challenge that I had. If there's something that you would say to the youth of today, what would you tell them? If I were to say something to youth today, I, 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 I would say this. Believe in yourself. And don't be discouraged because someone says you can't. Can't doesn't fall in your vocabulary. What you have to do is really say to yourself, how can I make this work? Listen to the people around you that are there to help you. Uh, I thought I knew it all. Uh, I didn't. And there are a lot of people that set me straight in terms of where I needed to go, the direction I needed to stay in. And for that, I am grateful. And all I'm doing is passing it on. And so I would say to the young people, live your dreams, go after them. And don't be afraid to say, I need your help. But there are a lot of people out there that want to give you the right kind of support. I got it, they can get it. So if somebody wanted you to be a mentor for their child or someone wanted to get a hold of you uh, for uh, business or for education, you learn more stuff about uh, education, what you've done in the city of Pittsburgh school, uh, how would they get a hold of you? You can do my email. It's Jordu, it's J-O-R-D-U, the number one, at AOL.com. And I have to tell you very quickly, and you may not have the time, but Jordu is a jazz tune. Jordu is the name of Duke Jordan. And I have to tell you, when I graduated from high school, I, was, I graduated most musically. And I ended up going to Duquesne University. And those musicians were just heads and shoulders above me. And they asked me to sit in and to play a little jazz, which was verboten at that time, it was not allowed. And hey, this is Harry, he's going to play his trumpet, he's going to play some jazz. And someone said, okay, let's play Jordu. And I had not a clue. Then I realized I didn't know everything there was to know. So I used Jordu as a way to remind me that you don't know everything and you can still learn new things. Tamiko Stanley, Assistant Director of Personnel and Civil Service, the EEO Officer for Mayor Luke Ravenstall, and the Chairperson for the Diversity 365 Task Force who put on today's event for the Mayor's Proclamation Ceremony. Can you tell me a little bit about today's event and the people that were honored? Today's event was really our uh, program to recognize Black History Month and to celebrate the contributions of African Americans throughout history, specifically those individuals who um, have been able to become successful from the Pittsburgh area as Pittsburgh music moguls. So we're very excited to have been able to do that today and recognize those pioneering individuals as well as the individuals that have been able to excel because of the efforts of pioneers. So how did you come up with these five individuals? Um, these five individuals were selected by our Diversity 365 Task Force members. Uh, we actually had an entire list of honorable mentions that we ran out of time to address today, but our honorable mentions included individuals like Melly Mal Plowton, um, obviously legends like Lena Horne, Phyllis Hyman, George Benson, and so we actually had a long list of honorable mentions for um, the mayor uh, to recognize today, but we actually, as you can see, we were extremely uh, crowded and way over capacity and ran out of time, but it was our way to really recognize the contributions from Pittsburgh and how we have been able to progress and impact the arts. 
So tell me a little bit more about Diversity 365. Diversity 365 is the mayor's program to recognize that we are a diverse city every single day and not for just a particular month, day, a festival or a fair, but that we are actually integrating diversity and inclusion in our everyday efforts 365 days a year. Um, it is a multifaceted program that focuses on employment, it focuses on our culture development, internal um, workforce at the city of Pittsburgh, and it focuses on being a model for other employers who want to be actually proactive and take seriously um, equality and equity in their workforce. For those who missed today's event, where would they be able to see it? It will play um, repeatedly on the City Channel and what I'm very excited about is that when it's playing on the City Channel you'll actually see a wonderful film from Shawnice Wilson. She did a thank you film that is amazing. She has her uh, Steelers jersey on so that'll actually be edited in when you see it on TV which I'm so excited about because she was over the hill, over the top excited about the honor and the recognition today. So if somebody wanted to get involved in Diversity 365 in the city of Pittsburgh, how would they do that? They would actually call our offices um, or go to our website or send me or Missy an email. Um, they can call 412-255-2705 or they can send an email to me, Tamiko Stanley at PittsburghPA.gov or they could go to pghjobs.net if they're looking for employment as we currently have a nice list of very great professional positions available at the current time and we're also uh, recruiting for a police officer right now which is something we're very excited about. So the Diversity 365 program we feel has been extremely successful although we feel there's a lot of work still left to be done. Um, we're currently doing a diverse diver desserts and diverse dishes cookbook for employees to share a story about individuals who have impacted their lives and be able to share their culture and heritage with us by putting a recipe for one of their family significant um, dishes in the book and so it's very important that we focus on the culture here at the city of Pittsburgh and we are the change the, the task force is kind of the leaders in changing the culture so that we're moving from a traditional culture and one that is ready for the future so we're very excited it is a lot of work it is important work but we're up for the challenge and we're very pleased with the progress that we've been able to make as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, I'd like to bring in um, Missy, my assistant, and Katie, our new training and development manager, to kind of talk a little bit about their role and what they do, because what they do is extremely important. Um, my name is Katie Riddle. I'm the manager of training and development for Department of Personnel and Civil Service. So what is that intel of doing? What well, I'm the trainer for all of the city employees, so any type of training that comes down through our directors or departments that have a request for a training, it goes straight to me. I also help out uh, Assistant Director Tamiko Stanley, and uh, we work on all of the diversity task force uh, initiatives that come up and just really support the team as a whole. So is there anyone in particular, in, in particular that you are targeting to help train when you're helping the Absolutely. Diversity 365 program? We're hoping to have a really large diversity training come up here soon. Um, we've been working on that for a while, and it's going to be a big initiative that we set out here pretty soon, and every employee will be trained in diversity, inclusion, and it should be a really great training. Can you tell me, like, one or two points of that training? Like, what would I go through as an employee? Um, well, for one, we just want to get everyone involved with um, working for the city and knowing one another, knowing each other's cultures and backgrounds and just really becoming more inclusive as a, an employer and letting our employees know that we do care about every single employee and we want to bring them all together and uh, just stress diversity and that's what we're trying to accomplish here with the training and get everyone involved and on board with it. Hi, I'm Melissa Urquhart. I am the assistant to assistant director to Nico Stanley. And my role really consists of ensuring that this wonderful assistant director is targeting all of the uh, various communities and the various sectors of the city of Pittsburgh. So we have recruitment sessions, diversity information sessions that are in every neighborhood. We're hitting churches, synagogues, we're hitting your local marts, we're hitting your nail salons. We're trying to make sure that we reach each and every one of you because diversity is inclusion and inclusion includes you. 
We're also on the move as far as our Diversity 365 task force. We are promoting diversity throughout the city all year long. So look for the Women's History Month, her story actually, as we express the story of unsung heroes throughout the city of Pittsburgh. Also look for our Living Legends event, which is coming to you annually every April, and it will be held at the Duquesne University Power Center. You're going to want to be there. It's always big. So where will we find uh, out about when and where this these events are coming? Well, you can always contact the Department of Personal and Civil Service at 412-255-2705 for more information about the diversity information sessions or about any of the upcoming events sponsored by the task force. Tamika, if there's anything to the youth of today of Pittsburgh and the nation that you would like to say something to, what would you say to them? You know what, um, it's interesting that you asked me that because um, our tagline is Diversity is opportunity, and um, opportunity is inclusion, and inclusion includes you. And when we're saying that, we are talking to the youth. We're talking to the, the youth and the young people that may or may not have ever thought about these type of careers in, at the city of Pittsburgh, um, all of these other careers behind the big careers that you see. So everyone sees the baseball player and the football player and all the front runners, but do you realize that there are 350 jobs behind that one particular player that makes it all happen? So we're definitely trying to um, do a little more than enlighten the youth, but actually give them the information that I know that I wish somebody would have told me when I was younger because there are things that are visible but some of the most important and significant things you don't even know exist as a youth. So that's what I would say that we're, we're trying to reach out to them and we're trying to hopefully provide information that will not only be useful but also open their eyes and help them to be able to inspire their peers as well. Can you tell me a website again so that they could go on and check out the program? They can check out our programs on the mayor's webpage at the city of Pittsburgh. Um, but we, if you're looking for career opportunities, you can go to pghjobs.net.